I am terrified of this man. Adam Smasher was only in Cyberpunk Edge Runners for like 10 minutes, and he captured the entire series in a way that I've never ever seen happen before. Normally speaking, when you have a main final antagonist, someone so strong that who knows, he might even beat the protagonist. I don't want to spoil anything. This doesn't really happen. That guy's usually hyped up for years, for eons. I could compare him to someone like Madara. Madara shows up all of a sudden, he beats up a whole bunch of ninjas by hand, he drops some meteors on the Kage that were hyped up forever. Madara is someone who is name dropped in episode like 130 of Naruto and only shows up in like episode 500. This is build up, okay? He's been built up for 400 episodes. So yes, his entrance is awesome and he's terrifying and he grabs the hearts of every viewer. Adam Smasher smashes the hearts of every viewer. And the guy had no hype. Normally hyping up a powerful villain is the go-to. When have you ever experienced a battle against a final villain, a major antagonist, or someone incredibly powerful, or someone that even makes you take your breath away in the final battle and he's a dude that was never hyped up before i have never seen that like i've been whacking my brains over it thinking when has this happened and i've been thinking of western shows i've been thinking of anime and i just can't stop realizing how crazy adam smasher is as a villain i haven't made an overpowered analysis in years but i'm back because this is an overpowered character done right in ways that i've never seen before. I was thinking of going down a whole list of major villains and how they were all hyped up and stuff, and I decided that I am going to do exactly that because this point needs to be stressed even more than I've already stressed it before getting into the meat and potatoes of why Adam Smasher is one of the greatest overpowered villains of all time. One Piece, every single major arc has a major villain, and every single time that major villain is encountered earlier and is extremely strong, and then only later do they proceed to actually beat him after a whole bunch of hyping up. Crocodile fights Luffy and wins. Doflamingo fights Luffy a long time before. Kaido fights Luffy and wins, etc, etc. All the major villains in One Piece fight the main characters before or are built up forever and only later eventually are overpowered and overcome or whatever in the massive final battle after they were all built up. Same for Bleach. Aizen was built up since the first major arc, literally, and he's only fought in this final battle hundreds of episodes later. Muzan and Demon Slayer is introduced before any of his commanders. He's built up constantly. All for one in my Hero Academia is this crazy legend before you even bump into him. Same with Western shows or stories. Like, if you look at Harry Potter, Voldemort is fighting at like one four billionth of his power level in the first book and the second book. He's not in the third book. He shows up in the fourth book again. He's every book's main antagonist, so that when you finally get this final battle, he's been built up forever. Same could be said for Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars. Same could be said for the Night King from Game of Thrones. The concept of building up an overpowered antagonist is a concept as old as fiction, yet Adam Smasher smashed that entire cliche and still cemented himself as one of the most terrifying villains I've ever seen. So enough with that. I really needed to build up this concept that he wasn't built up, and that's one of the reasons why I actually decided to make this video. Adam Smasher is an overpowered villain done exceptionally well, and you're about to know why. There's a very important rule in the world of cyberpunk edge runners, and this rule is if you build yourself up with enough chrome and plug enough upgrades into your buttholes, all of a sudden, you are going to develop a state of cyberpsychosis. You're going to become a zombie, the chrome is going to take over, and you are going to go crazy and die. It's something that happens to everyone who overdoes it with the chrome and who gets too many upgrades. This is their eventual fate. This happens to so many characters, friend and foe alike. Even the main character, who's essentially special, and the whole time he can use these upgrades without going crazy, he develops symptoms of cyberpsychosis as well. Enter Adam Smasher, a dude introduced in the final episodes just sitting in the shadows a dude who has more chrome in him than every other character we've seen in the entire story combined and this dude is mentally intact just this combo just this very introduction that someone who has all of this built up into him being totally fine with it that's really really scary it immediately presents a character who hasn't been personally built up throughout the entire story but conceptually should not be able to exist he did have all the build up he needed just by the fact that we understood that every single other character in the entire story needed to go crazy if they had too much chrome it makes no sense it's like if you had an entire story talking about how powerful nuclear weapons are 
That's the entire theme, okay? All these powerful characters, they've all been wiped out by nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons are the strongest thing in the ever. And then you have a character introduced at the end, like Adam Smasher, and a nuclear weapon doesn't even affect him. By that point, you've already built him up. You've had an entire story to build up exactly how strong he is and terrifying he is, even without him being mentioned or present. The main character is trying out the super epic new armor he just wipes out a basic army. Adam Smasher's not worried because he has even higher tech. Now, this tech that the main character, who's special by the way, is turning him slowly into a cyber psycho, and Adam Smasher with even higher tech is unaffected completely. This contrast is so scary, even from the moment you see him. It doesn't matter who he kills. It doesn't matter who he fights. The fact that this person can stand there and be everything that the series designed to be impossible is absolutely terrifying and immediately establishes him as a character that was essentially built up by the falling of others around him. The fact that he seems like a killing machine, yet still maintaining his humanity, is also a really crazy side-by-side. -side. He's ruthless, he's terrifying, and he has no fear. He is so confident as well. He shakes the earth around him with his charisma alone. It doesn't matter how high the higher-ups are because he doesn't mind killing them. He doesn't mind betraying orders because he knows that he's much more useful to anyone alive than dead. And even if he was more useful to them dead, I don't think he thinks that they could even kill him. Nothing is sacred to a man that doesn't think he could possibly lose and doesn't think anyone could possibly root against him or they know that they would lose. So he stands here uncaring of all the people around him and whether they are important or not because to him they are insignificant. He stands here knowing that he's going up head to head with someone with the most advanced technology in the world without even being afraid. He's someone who stands here, someone who is not affected by the cyber psychosis that plagues everyone else that should even have a fraction of the amount of tech that he does. So he stands here commanding so much respect, awe, and straight up stomach turning fear from everyone around him and from the audience together no Knowing that the end is nigh. He is someone that commands so much respect without even showing up before. And goddamn, does his design look good! Oh my god! God. There's something else that I wanted to talk about, and there's another reason why he's an overpowered anime character done right. And it's not just the fact that he commands this respect, it's not just this mindset or this abolishment of the world's seeming rules that makes him so scary and so terrifying. It's something even more than that. Because it's not just the world's laws, the world's rules, and the lore that he's managing to warp around him for some unknown reason. He breaks the themes of the story as well. I mean, technically he crafts them because this is the major theme of the story. The fact that no one is special is a running gag throughout the entire story. You have the main character, David, who thinks he's special because he can use all this chrome and he doesn't become a cyber psycho. He goes through coasting on this feeling of specialness throughout the entire story until you finally realize he's not special. That is exactly one of the major themes of the story. I made a video, No One Understands Cyberpunk Edge Runners, like a week ago, and it was a really good video, and I highly suggest you watch it if you want to see my overall take on all the themes and underlying understandings of the story, but not only does Adam Smasher deliver that blow that teaches you that David is not special, it also makes you question if maybe Adam Smasher is. In all of this world, you're building up this concept that no one is special. Anyone can become a cyber psycho. Anyone can be killed by a stray bullet. Nothing is sacred. Nothing is special. It is a completely warped society, a crazy dystopian future where nothing matters, and even the rich and powerful can just be overcome by someone else who wants their spot. But here you have someone that spits in the face of all the themes of the show. Here you have someone that, by all metrics that we actually have, whether it's status or power or just the actual rules of the show not working on him, you have someone that is is special. Someone that is unaffected by all this chrome. Someone that does not care about all of the superiors and all the organizations and the corporations and the rich people in the world because he's far more useful to them alive or than dead. Someone who none of the dystopian issues actually affect. He's a terrifying overpowered antagonist not only because he's so strong, not only because he's so terrifying, and not only because he commands all this respect, because the entire story is about how no one is special and somehow this guy is. It's really scary. It's goddamn terrifying. And it cemented Adam Smasher, someone who only showed up for like a single episode of a show, as one of the most terrifying, overpowered antagonists I have 
ever seen. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this overpowered analysis of Adam Smasher. I'm trying to keep it concise. I said all the things I wanted to say without repeating myself. I know the meta on YouTube now is repeating yourself until your videos become an hour long, but uh, I'm not really into that, so please subscribe. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Let me know if you want me to cover other facets of the cyberpunk world, or if you want more overpowered analyses on other characters. But anyway, I hope you did enjoy. Please leave a like. Please subscribe. Check out future stuff. Nux and our channel is back. Old Nux is back. Taking requests. Let me know what you want me to cover. Have yourself a most wonderful evening, and remember to stay weird, fam.